The most controversial theories of Stephen Hawking may soon be a reality as the theory will be tested soon. Stephen Hawking and Bernard Carr, his PhD student, proposed primordial black holes in 1974. Hypothetical black holes that were reported to have existed soon after the Big Bang could be the dark matter first theorized in 1933. And over four decades later, this theory could be proven. The James Webb Telescope will provide higher resolution and sensitivity over its predecessor, allowing scientists to observe some of the universe's most distant events and objects. Stick to the end of this video to know all about Stephen Hawking's black hole theory and how it will finally be proven through the James Webb Telescope. The James Webb Space Telescope launch could now produce data needed to assess one of Stephen Hawking's most controversial theories, suggesting that dark matter may be made of black holes formed in the earliest moments of the Big Bang. The so-called primordial black holes can range in size from tiny ones smaller than the head of a pin to supermassive ones spanning billions of miles. A new model of the universe in which these black holes make up the vast majority of black matter has been proposed by astrophysicists at Yale. The team awaits new data from NASA's recently launched James Webb Space Telescope, which may prove the theory to be true. This new discovery would change scientists' understanding of the origins and nature of black holes, which have been observed, and dark matter, which has never been directly observed. The famed physicist's proposal was modified by astrophysicists at Yale, the University of Miami, and the European Space Agency, ESA. And they created a new model of how the early universe may have formed. According to Live Science, three astronomers have developed a theory that explains the existence of dark matter and the appearance of the largest black holes in the universe. They said that several new instruments, including the recently launched James Webb Space Telescope, could produce data needed to finally assess Hawking's famous notion. What I find personally super exciting about this idea is how it elegantly unifies the two really challenging problems that I work on, that of probing the nature of dark matter and the formation and growth of black holes, and resolves them in one fell swoop. Study co-author Priyamvada Natarajan, an astrophysicist at Yale University, said in a statement as per Live Science. Many experts suggest about 85% of all the matter in the universe is dark matter, but it has never been seen nor detected for such a great amount. The puzzle-like material is invisible because it does not reflect light, and scientists have never directly observed it. Astronomers believe it will be out there because of its gravitational effects on known matter. The European Space Agency says, Shine a torch in a completely dark room, and you will see only what the torch illuminates. That does not mean that the room around you does not exist. Similarly, we know dark matter exists, but have never observed it directly. Calculations show that many galaxies would be torn apart instead of rotating if they weren't held together by a large amount of dark matter. Atoms and subatomic particles are known matter that the observable universe is composed of just 5%. Black holes, on the other hand, have been observed scientifically. It's quite reasonable to think that black holes might be responsible for this evasive situation. After all, black holes are famously dark, so filling a galaxy with black holes could theoretically explain all the observations of dark matter. Astronomers explain that black holes are formed only after massive stars die, then collapse under the weight of their own gravity. Making black holes requires many stars, which requires a bunch of normal matter. Now. Scientists know how much normal matter is in the universe from calculations of the early universe, where the first helium and hydrogen formed. But they believe that there simply isn't enough normal matter to make all the dark matter, which makes up over 80% of all the matter in the universe. This study, which has been accepted for publication in the Astrophysical Journal, goes back to the early theory by physicists Stephen Hawking and Bernard Carr. The two had argued that in the earliest moments after the Big Bang, tiny fluctuations in the density of the universe may have created an undulating landscape with lumpy regions that had extra mass, areas that would then collapse into black holes. 
Therefore, Stephen Hawking suggested that black holes formed in the chaotic environment of the earliest moments of the Big Bang. He had explained that pockets of matter could spontaneously reach the densities needed to make black holes, flooding the cosmos with them well before the first stars twinkled. He further also suggested that these primordial black holes might be responsible for dark matter. The primordial black holes have to be within a certain mass range to pass current observational tests. In the new work, the researchers assumed that the primordial black holes had a mass of around 1.4 times the mass of the Sun. They constructed a model of the universe that replaced all the dark matter with these fairly light black holes. And then, they looked for observational clues that could validate the model or completely rule it out. In the most recent research, Natarajan Nico Capaluti at the University of Miami and Gunther Hazinger at the European Space Agency looked into the theory of primordial black holes, exploring how they might explain dark matter and possibly resolve other cosmological challenges. The existence of primordial black holes could finally be determined by the James Webb Space Telescope, set to launch on December 22nd, and ESA's Laser Interferometer Space Antenna, LISA, mission announced for the 2030s. The James Webb Telescope mission will be to find the first galaxies that formed in the early universe and see stars forming planetary systems. Therefore, gravitational wave signals from early mergers of primordial black holes will possibly be picked up by LISA. If the first stars and galaxies already formed in the so-called Dark Ages, Webb should be able to see evidence of them, says astronomer Gunther Hazinger of the European Space Agency. James Webb should reveal new and unexpected discoveries and help humanity understand the origins of the universe and our place in it. One of the objectives is to look back in time over 13.5 billion years to see the first stars and galaxies that formed a few hundred million years after the Big Bang. The telescope will mainly look at the universe in the infrared, while Hubble has examined it since its 1990 launch primarily at optical and ultraviolet wavelengths. Natarajan and her colleagues said growing primordial black holes would present exactly the same radiation signature. They found that primordial black holes could play an important part in the universe by seeking the first stars, galaxies, and supermassive black holes (SMBHs). They also said their observations indicate that stars, galaxies, and SMBHs appear very quickly in cosmological history. Perhaps too quickly to be accounted for by the processes of formation and growth observed in the present-day universe. Primordial black holes, if they do exist, could well be the seeds from which all supermassive black holes form, including the one at the center of the Milky Way, Natarajan said. A series of new particles isn't necessarily required to explain dark matter because the theory is quite simple. Our study shows that without introducing new particles or new physics, we can solve mysteries of modern cosmology from the nature of dark matter itself to the origin of supermassive black holes," Capaluti said in the statement. What's more, models of primordial black hole formation ran into observational issues. If too many formed in the early universe, they changed the picture of the leftover radiation from the early universe, known as the Cosmic Microwave Background CMB. That meant the theory only worked when the number and size of ancient black holes were fairly limited, or it would conflict with the measurements of the CMB. This idea is still a model, but scientists believe that this could be tested relatively soon. They said that the James Webb Space Telescope, which launched Christmas Day after years of delays, is specifically designed to answer questions about the origins of stars and galaxies. In addition, the next generation of gravitational wave detectors, especially the Laser Interferometer Space Antenna, or LISA, is also composed to reveal much more about black holes, including primordial ones if they truly exist. Astronomers say that together, the two observatories should give them enough information to put together the story of the first stars and potentially the origins of dark matter. It was irresistible to explore this idea deeply, knowing it had the potential to be validated fairly soon," Natarajan said. As always, thanks for watching and please subscribe to our channel.